Hi kids! Welcome to episode 17 of Haven Kids at Home. Can you believe we have 17 episodes of Haven Kids? So many songs and stories and catechism questions. I wonder how much you guys know now. It's been really fun to do this with you guys and I can't wait for the next episode. In fact, I was in the pool and I jumped out of the pool so we can dive into episode 17. Are you guys ready? Let's do it. <gasps> hey my kids! Oh, oh, hi there. So it's catechism time and we're gonna do a review and it's kind of a review party but we're kind of partying with the insects because they're so stinking loud right now. So, catechism questions 29 to 35. And that's a lot, and it's all that we've been learning about sin and what is sin and all that business. Okay, I have my fancy summer beach umbrella out. That's what this is, because it's pretty. So remember, question 29 is what is sin? And the answer is, any lack of conformity to or transgression of the law of God. And then you go, what is that about? And that's because question 30 and 31 answer those. So question 30 is what is meant by lack of conformity? And the answer is not being or doing what God requires. Okay. And then question 31 is what is meant by transgression? The answer is doing what God forbids. Cool, cool, cool. So then we get to question 32. What does every sin deserve? And the answer is the wrath and curse of God. Question 33, what was the sin of our first parents? And you know this one, eating the forbidden fruit. Blech. Blech. Question 34, who tempted Adam and Eve to this sin, which is eating the forbidden fruit, right? Satan tempted Eve, and then he used her to tempt Adam. Oh, oh, ah, okay, tricky, tricky, right? So then question 35, this is our last one to review. Question 35, how did Adam and Eve change when they sinned? Instead of being holy and happy, you remember when God made them, they were holy and happy? So awesome, right? God made them and they were holy and happy. Well, instead of being holy and happy, they were sinful and miserable. No good. Here we go. Okay, here's I got the music ready. Got we, we're queued up, and so insects. Can you tone it down? Can you sing louder than the cicadas? I bet you can. What is sin? Sin is any lack of conformity to a transgression of the law of God. Sin by lack of conformity to being or doing what God requires. What is meant by transgression? Doing what God forbids. What does every sin be? The wrath and curse of God. What does it mean of my first parents? Eating the bread and fruit. Who did Adam and Eve to this sin? Satan tends to eat first. And then he used her to tempt Adam. How did Adam and Eve change when they sin? Instead of being holy and happy, they became sinful and miserable. Awesome, guys! Awesome, 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 awesome. Thanks again for another time with catechism with me. And next time we're going to move on to more. Love you guys. Have a great time. Find some water to play in or something because it's hot. Be nice to the insects even though they're loud. Mwah. Changing it up on you, but still singing Grace Got You. So if you know the lyrics, sing along.
verse for the week is Mark 16, 15. And the hand motions to that are go, 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 go. Mark 16, 15. Go unto the world and preach the good, good news. Go unto the world and preach the good news to everyone. Go, 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 go. Mark 16, 15. Mark 16, 15. Mark 16, 15. Go, 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 go. Go on to all the world and preach the good news. The good news. Go on to all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Mark 16, 15. Mark 16, 15. Mark 16, 15. Go, 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 go. Bye, guys. You guys like my new fishing pole? I heard a bunch of monkeys around my house. So I made this in order to catch one. Well, I guess it wouldn't be called fishing, it would be called monkey ink. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of a story. Let's get into it. Now you guys are in for quite a treat this week. Oh, it's not a banana, but we are actually diving into the New Testament. I think back, think back from to the very beginning of the New Testament. Think back to Adam and Eve and how they disobey God in the garden. Well, ever since that point, God made a promise and he promised to send someone to rescue all of humanity. Now who that was and how God would fulfill his promise it was a secret all throughout the Old Testament. And fast forward to the New Testament. Well, this is where Jesus comes in. And Jesus, he shows us that he was the plan the whole time. Now, the first four books of the New Testament, they are called the Gospels. Remember that word, Gospel? What does it mean? It means good news. What's that good news? The good news that Jesus has arrived. And all the promises in the Old Testament point to Jesus. Today, we're going to dive into Mark, Mark 1 and 2. And, and Mark 1 and 2 tells us about Jesus when he's already grown up. And where he is, it's in the area of Israel called Galilee. And what happens in Galilee, well, Jesus, he goes about telling the people about his good news. Okay, but before we get into that, think back to last week. What happened in last week's story? Remember how God used a whole nation called Babylon? They swallowed up the land of Judea. So, and this time, there was another empire, another nation, a great nation, called Rome. In Rome, they controlled the land of Judea. And so, they made life super difficult for the Jewish people. And the Jewish people, during their hard lives, they thought about how God promised a special place where God ruled over his special people. And they thought God would send someone to kick the Romans out of their land. But God had a much, much, much bigger plan. His plan was to rescue the whole world. Not just the land of Israel or the land of Judea. He wanted to rescue all of it. Why is that? Why did he want to rescue the whole world? Well, because God's special people, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. God's special people wasn't just the Jewish people. God's special people includes anyone. Anyone. Who trusts in Jesus and believes his good news. Anyone. Jesus, he was in Galilee. Let's go back to our story. He was in Galilee and he wanted to spread his good news. But the question is, how was he going to do that? Now, Jesus, he's God, and he's all-powerful, and he could choose 
any method of spreading his news. He could use his holy Twitter account. He could, I don't know, use TV commercials. I'm sure he was more powerful or powerful enough to make a big billboard in the sky to share his good news. But he didn't do those. No, he chose to use people. One day, as Jesus was walking along the lake, which was called the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, and they owned a family fishing business. We can pretend that are the fishing boat. And so Jesus, he comes up to these brothers, and he says, Simon and Andrew, let's go. I'll make you people fishers. People what? Or fishers of men. And guess what? They drop their nets and their fishing poles, or their lightsabers, for this matter, and they followed him. They followed Jesus. Now later, Jesus, he saw two other brothers, and they were in a fishing boat as well. And their names were James and John. And he called out to them to follow him, which they did just like Simon and Andrew. Sometime later, Jesus again was walking along the lake and he saw a guy who was collecting money. And this guy's name was Levi. And so Jesus, he goes up to him, tells him the same thing, to drop what he's doing and to follow him. What did he do? Well, he dropped what he was doing. Isn't that crazy? Back in the day, teachers of the Bible, they spent years and years studying the scriptures. To become a teacher, only the wealthy or the rich people could become teachers. They only chose important people to teach. Jesus, he chose fairly unimportant people. He knew that you didn't have to be rich. You didn't have to be powerful in order to be important in God's kingdom. The important people to Jesus was his friends. And his friends, they loved God, they listened to his commands, and they obeyed his commands. These people were called his disciples or his followers. And he wanted them to spread his good news. When they learned from Jesus, they told people about, all about his good news. Did you know that Jesus, he still calls people to be his friends. He still calls people to spread the news about his kingdom and to be people fishers. And keep in mind that he doesn't only call important people. He calls people like you and me. And to be a people fisher. People fisherman. I know it sounds weird. Three things. Trust in him. Obey his commands to love him. And to love our neighbors. Well, that's it for today. I'm going to go catch me some monkeys. Tune in next week to see how many I get. Bye, guys. Wow. That was such a good time. Man, I'm so glad we got to do this together. I learned a lot. And that song today was probably my favorite. Was it yours? Hey kids, don't forget, you can keep connecting with your friends and your family on our website, www.havencady slash hkhome. And on there is all of our episodes with little activities that you can do with your family. They're usually quick and easy, but a lot of fun. And they're a great way to have conversation and connect with your family. So we hope you guys keep connecting and we'll see you next week for another episode of Haven Kids at Home. All right guys. Bye.